I'm trying to film, so just... <laughs> I'm just waiting. <laughs> Alright, hi guys, this is Cassandra again with Spokehaven and Fitchburg Cycles. So today we're going to do part two of our video, which talks about the kind of the next steps in the fix a flat process. Uh, right now behind me I have a bike that's flipped upside down so when you're on the side of the road this is most likely the way that you're gonna find the bike uh, easiest to work on when you have a flat tire or what have you need to do some maintenance on it most people don't have just like a convenient roadside stand there to put the bike in so that's why I'm gonna show it show you it kind of in this way so then you have a visualization you have a way to kind of see what it's going to look like when you're on the road and needing to take that wheel off and what the next steps are. So this particular bike is kind of your traditional what we call kind of U or C shaped road bike so you can see where I'm kind of pointing to here on the screen. Here is the brake system and the wheel kind of rolls through that. So the next steps we're going to want to take is we're going to want to shift this bike down into an easier gear range so it'll be easier to pop the wheel back on and off of the bike. Alright, so sorry you didn't get a visualization of that, you probably just heard it happen, but uh, so what I'm going to do is on these road brakes, so there's a little tiny lever here, hopefully you can see it, but in order to remove the wheel a little bit easier, you can actually open this lever. And what it does is it creates a little bit of space between the brake pads here in order for you to remove the wheel. So uh, if you have a completely flat tire, obviously you may not need to do this, but uh, because there's still a little bit of air in this one, this isn't a completely flat tire, uh, I would actually need to open that up in order to pop this off of the bike. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to loosen the quick release. So pretty much all kind of traditional road bikes will have this system and basically it's the lever that attaches the wheel to the bike and you need to open this up in order to pull the wheel off of the rear. So assuming you have a decent bike mechanic who doesn't hate you or has a significant other who hasn't over tightened this, it should be fairly easy to open. So you can always open the lever. The lever will actually say open on it. I'm not sure if the uh, camera is capturing this or not. I apologize. But uh, so right now my lever is open and I, instead of moving the lever side, I actually will move the nutted side of the skewer. So I will go ahead and loosen that up. And once I kind of can feel some of the spring on each side of the skewer, I can tell that I'm likely going to be able to clear the, uh, the wheel from the, the rear uh, dropouts of the bike here. So I wanted to show the non-drive side, of, or the drive side of the bike rather. So the drive side is always the side that has your rear derailleur, your chain cassette and everything, the crank on the same side. So when your bike's flipped upside down, it's going to be obviously opposite of when you're riding. So the drive side is going to be to my left side. So the nutted side that I was playing with before on the skewer is right here. And uh, I loosened it up enough. So. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to want to kind of push up to get this bike, the wheel, sorry, out of the bike dropout. So uh, you'll have to see the dropout here. Oop, my little <laughs> nutted side came off. If you loosen it enough, that'll happen. So just want to make sure. So it has the spring and the nut. Don't want to lose that. So I usually will put it in my pocket or a safe place. I'll just put it in the saddle uh, for now. Uh, but the next thing I want to do is get this chain off of this cassette here. So your rear derailleur is spring-loaded. That's the nice thing about it. Uh, I wouldn't recommend pulling it side to side. It's not necessarily meant to do that because then you'll bend your uh, derailleur hanger, but it is able to spring forward and back. So I can do this all day. That's what it's designed for. You can push it forward, it's spring-loaded, and you don't have to worry about breaking anything, which is nice. So the easiest way to do this is to kind of pull some of the chain off of the cassette and pull the wheel up and to the side. 
So if, if some of the chain catch is not a big deal, then it'll just spring back. So right now, I have the wheel off, and here's the rest of my skewer that I'm just going to take out for the moment and put it down in a safe place. So we've got the rear wheel off. So that's all there really is to it, and I can kind of show you the reverse of that if you just want to see it real quick before we kind of move on to the next thing. So it's basically the opposite to where you want to push the spring forward. You want to lay the chain, usually I do it on one of the smaller cogs in the cassette, and then kind of set it down and it'll spring sort of back into place. You may have to play with it a little bit to kind of get it there. And because I had shifted it into kind of the bigger ring, it actually may be smarter for me to move the chain over to a slightly larger ring so it's already kind of in that position. But you can press this forward and kind of eyeball to get the hub in between the dropouts. Again, uh, you'll want to pay attention to drive side and non-drive side of the bike. So the lever side of the skewer will always go opposite of the drive side stuff. So you want to make sure, this skewer kind of looks weird because we have a burly attachment on this bike. Um, so just kind of ignore that for the time being. But hey, if you have a burly trailer, this is how you do it. Or if you pull behind a trailer. Um, so you, I'll kind of show you the skewer naked. So you want to always put, so you have the lever, you have the little cam piece. Not all of these come with this particular cam piece, uh, but you want to do a bow tie with the um, springs. So you want the small side of the springs to face each other. So it kind of looks like a bow tie. So if you can imagine this on your bike, the small facing piece of the skewers are facing each other. So you don't put them on the same side, so you have one on one side and one on the other side. So right now, I'm gonna stick this side in from the non-drive side and put this little guy, so I'm making my bow tie on the other side, the little side forward and then the nutted side on. And I, again, usually will kind of hold the lever side and I tend to tighten the nutted side of my skewer. And you want it to be tight enough to where kind of like the, the meaty part of your hand is what pushes it down. That way you'll know. And then you'll also want to make sure, especially when you're putting your wheel on, this is why I like doing it upside down because you're less likely to kind of push it to one side. But you'll just kind of want to take a peek between your brake pads and you'll have to do this on any bike so whether it's a road bike like this a bike with cantilever brakes or with disc brakes to just make sure that the tire or the wheel is not pushing t more towards one side than the other so uh, i always just kind of try to eyeball it you may have to change it once you tighten it down but let's see here yeah so my lever's still a little bit loose so i'm going to do a few more turns and you kind of just kind of have to experiment. This actually feels pretty good, so I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this down. Obviously, uh, I will have to redo it because I have to make space for this little guy, but for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna go ahead and close this lever, and I can tell that it's closed and nice and tight, and now I can kind of spring. There we go. So my derailleur will then shift back to the position that it was originally in uh, when I went to put the wheel on. Oh, sorry if it's a little dark here. I'll see if I can lighten things up a little bit. There we go. Uh, I'm losing my, my daylight here. but uh, So now you can see that your derailleur is totally back to where you had left it originally. So you are pretty much all set. Uh, the one nice thing about the road bikes is if you forget that little lever that I kind of showed you at the beginning, uh, there's a safety feature. So if you forget that, if you forget to close it, it's not the end of the world. Your brakes will still work. They'll probably just feel a little bit squishy. So I'm going to go ahead and re-tighten it down so it's closed and boom, I'm on my way. So you're probably asking yourself, uh, what about the whole part of taking the uh, tire off and putting a new tube on? I'm going to get to that. So I just wanted to kind of show you this to begin with. That way you can come back to it. This is just kind of a way to get you comfortable with taking the wheel on and off of the bike. Uh, that way you kind of know what's going on. So 
All right, so next up is gonna be, I'm gonna show you a couple of different ways that you have to take the wheel off of other bikes with different brake systems. So that'll be right up next. All right, so next up we have cantilever brakes. So depending on the style of brakes that you have on your bike, or brake levers rather, so this bike is not as commonly seen, but they still exist. So it has a bar and shifter so that this controls your derailleurs and your shifting, and these are the brake levers. So on a lot of these types of bikes, the brake levers here actually have a release on them. So there's a little silver button here. So if you depress the brake, and press that button, it'll actually release some of the cable tension on the brake. With that, you can kind of see the brake looks a little uh, cattywampus, so that's partially due to uh, me releasing that cable tension, but now I can squeeze these brake pads together enough to release them so then they pop open. So this side is completely free, and oof, these brakes need a little love. This bike needs a little love in general, but uh, so that's how you do it on a cantilever system. So there's usually going to be some sort of brake release. I have these or this similar style braking system on my bike. Unfortunately, I don't have a good way to release the brake because I don't use the, that style. So usually what I have to do to take the wheel off is deflate the entire tire. Obviously, if you have a flat tire, you don't really have to worry about that as much, but um, so I deflate the tire. I can then kind of release, push these uh, again. Here's how you rehook it back in here. There's usually some sort of something that'll kind of this little piece will fit into that you put in there. But usually you just squeeze them together. That'll release. It may be a little bit more tough than that. The spike is a little bit old. It needs some love. The springs are a little more loose. So it's a little bit easier to deal with. But so that's how you do it. And then I would just reset the brake up at the front and then to take the wheel off it's the same uh, process as I showed you previously in the video so I just wanted to go over that really quickly as far as how to release a brake on a cantilever style system. So next up is a road uh, disc system so on this particular bike it has a disc brake that's hydraulic, so it's going to be a little bit different. You, there's a, not much you really need to do on this, which is kind of nice and kind of the design of the bike. So on most road, road uh, disc brake bikes or a uh, hydraulic disc mountain bike or whatever type of bike that has a hydraulic system, a lot, a lot of them will have a through axle system as well. Not all of them. Some of them may still have a skewer based system, but it's kind of going to a through axle technology. So it looks a lot like your regular kind of skewer, but it's a lot easier actually to take on and off. So you just have to loosen it up. So righty tighty lefty loosey. This happens to be a live uh, slash giant cycling product. So this is what their through axles look like. I have a Cannondale that does not have a lever. You actually have to use a, a tool, I think like a five or a six millimeter Allen wrench to actually pull the through axle out of the bike and, and drop it out. So you'll just have to pay attention to what your system has because you wanna make sure that whatever tools you may need to remove your wheels that you have on you during your ride because if not, eh, you're kind of stuck and that's not fun, so be prepared. Uh, luckily on this bike, I don't need any sort of special tool as far as taking the wheels off. So uh, I took my skewer out here. I had already previously, so you may want to do this before you flip the bike over. I was kind of showing you before earlier in the video that you're going to want to shift your bike down into like an easier gear. I actually ended up um, going small, small uh, just to kind of experiment with that. Sometimes it doesn't really matter, but it might make it easier for me to pop the rear wheel off again. So the derailleur will lift up, or the, the bike, the wheel, <laughs> straight out, kind of pull it towards the opposite side of where the chain is and pull it right off. And so the only thing I want to pay attention to right now, since this is a hydraulic system, is I do not want to pull the brake lever because on a hydraulic system, the brake pads are what they call self-adjusting. So you'll want to make sure that you're not pulling the lever because the brake pads, the fluid basically pushes the pads together. So as the, the pads wear down, 
uh, slowly the hydraulic fluid will push them kind of closer together to kind of self-adjust but they are they are limited by the pressure um, in the the fluid line as to how far they will go and also uh, that's kind of the job of the rotor then too is to to make it so that they're not closing in on each other right away so since you don't have a rotor in there you don't want to pull the lever so you just want to pay attention to that making sure you're not pulling the lever because what can happen is those two little pads will get stuck together. Now they do make a little uh, wedge that you can put in there. I tend to hand them to every single customer that we sell to that has a bike that has hydraulics. That way they could put it in their seat pack, they could keep it in their car or whatever. Um, keep it on them in some way, shape, or form on the bike. So if they need to transport the bike when taking the wheel off or if they're doing maintenance or repair on their bikes and they need to take the wheels off. That way, if they forget and they accidentally pull that line, then their brake pads aren't getting stuck together. It's not the end of the world. It, there are tools that Park uh, Tool makes where you, it's a pad spreader. So you can buy one of those too if you're really worried about it. But just just to like kind of reiterate on this type of system, if you have hydraulic disc brakes, just Think about that before you uh, go messing around with anything at the front of your bike while the wheels are off. So, all right, and then just as easy as the wheel came off, again, just kind of get that chain on there. It's spring loaded so you can push down. Don't have to be super worried about breaking anything, you'll be all right. And sometimes it can be a little bit trickier with the through axle bikes because the wheels uh, have these little hub caps that kind of sit into the bike. So sometimes you just have to clear it, like on this one you do. And again, just kind of making sure that your wheel isn't sticking too far to one side. That's another beauty of a the other beauty of through axle bikes is you don't really have to worry about centering the wheel quite as much because it kind of centers itself since you're not using a skewer where you're like worried about putting too much tension on one side of the wheel versus the other. Basically you just need to make sure that you're lining up your through axle holes all the way through so then it'll thread in all the way and usually as long as your brakes were adjusted well to begin with. You shouldn't have too much rub. Um, and then I usually just pedal my bike. Obviously it's rubbing right now because it's in a weird gear ratio, but the wheel is spinning and everything is clear and good to go. So we'll kind of move on to the next step, which is taking off the tire.